Hey folks, it is Thursday, January 13th. The time is 2 p.m. and the temperature is around 1 degree Celsius. And just on my left here is the future Keelsdale LRT station. And believe it or not, that is slated to open at some point later this year. And just in front of me is Trithui Drive. And for this one, I'm going to walk south half a block or so to Eglinton Avenue West. And then I'll walk east along Eglinton. And I'm not quite sure yet where this one will finish up. But it's about two kilometers from here to Dufferin Street. So I'll go at least that far. And there's a look at the new station. It is, of course, not yet open. And it's the second last stop on the new LRT line. The last stop being just one to the west of here at Mount Dennis. And it's called Keelsdale, as the neighborhood from here at Keel Street to I think Black Creek Drive to the west is the Keelsdale neighborhood. You can see there's an entrance at the northwest corner. There doesn't appear to be anything at the southwest corner, and there's another one at the southeast corner. talked about before what a remarkable amount of space these LRT stations seem to take up. And one thing that has sprung up in this area are bike lanes. I think from here heading west along Eglinton for quite a ways the new bike lane has made an appearance. And that's something I'll have to get out and ride the bike along. So you can look for a future video that shows that off. And there's a large dollar tree. There is the jerk box. And you'll notice there's a rather large Caribbean influence along the stretch of Eglinton. East of Dufferin is an area known as Little Jamaica. But there's a lot of Caribbean businesses out this way. So the tunneling for the LRT line is complete and that runs underneath where we're walking now. And for the most part, the western stretch of the new LRT is below ground, except for the last stop, which is to the west of here in the other direction. That's above ground.
always kind of nice to walk through an area that's just not lined with chain stores. Wash your hands like you <laughs> ate spicy jerky. There is Z Bar and Grill, or maybe it's Z Bar and Grill. Tim Nell's Patties. Tim Nell's Patties. And there's a sign signifying that we're on West Eglinton. So it'll be interesting to see how the LRT transforms this area. These businesses have already undergone quite a bit of hardship with the construction of the LRT. While they were tunneling underneath Eglinton, a lot of their entrances were blocked or extremely difficult to navigate to. Street parking was difficult. And as a consequence, a lot of them ended up closing, which is a bit of, well, it's a bit more than a bit of a shame. It's rather unfortunate. So in total, there'll be 25 stations or stops might be more correct as the above ground stops to the east of here aren't really LRT stations. They look more like above ground streetcar stops. And the LRT was supposed to open back in 2021. And the total estimated budget for the project is around five and a half billion. And here we are in 2022, and construction began, began back in 2011, and it's still not completed. The first tunnel work began back in 2013. It's worth noting in the 90s, there was actually an Eglinton West subway that was under construction. And the very conservative government at the time killed the project, even though shovels were in the ground. So one has to wonder what this would, or what this area would have looked like if the subway were completed. That's the Atopolis Used Car Superstore. There's a building there that seems to have the paint scheme of the Toronto Police on it. There's a 32 Eglinton bus. There's another Dollar Tree in there. There sure are a lot of dollar stores in this neighborhood. And a place called Edie Lube. <laughs> Obviously the R is missing. And we have another station on the left. I think this one is Caledonia Station. There's a look at what it'll look like 
I'll certainly try to get out this way and do a few videos on the LRT once it opens. Although, unfortunately, it looks like Eglinton Station, which will be the main hub of the line, won't be opening this year. It's been announced that that particular station is likely to undergo a delay. any kind of view to be had on the other side of that overpass. Well, the light's going to change in 10 seconds. So I'll head over to the south side. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a hazy day. Foggy is probably the better term. Otherwise, there would be a clear shot of the CN Tower and the Financial District. And a shot of the Young Street High Rise Corridor. There's a development going in. I wonder if that's all part of the LRT station. It's amazing how much redevelopment of the streetscape this LRT is causing. And let's not kid ourselves, it is not a subway. In fact, above ground, on the east side, it won't even have transit or signal priority. Meaning that the LRT vehicles are likely to get caught up in traffic, the same as a lot of the streetcars do. Which will lead to bunching and service delays. is Caledonia Road. Here's a very narrow looking building, the New Caledonia Pharmacy. Free flu shots there. I thought they were free anywhere. <laughs> How narrow would those spaces up there be? 
on that second floor. I think that would have to be office space. What a fascinating little building. the Portuguese takeout shop. Coming up here on the right is Prospect Cemetery. That is an absolutely enormous cemetery. I think it stretches south from here all the way down to St. Clair Avenue. With Rogers Road being the only other major east-west street to intersect it. And that's been there since 1890. And I think it's run by the same group that looks after Mount Pleasant Cemetery, another huge cemetery in the city. So this area is known as Caledonia. The area to the north of here is known as Caledonia Fairbank. There you can see the entrance to the cemetery. Now open, it's the Wonder Pot Cannabis Store. So the next major street will be Dufferin. And there'll be another LRT station there. I think that one will be called Fairbank. And then the one in the heart of Little Jamaica will be Oakwood. And after that is Eglinton West, which will be named Cedarvale once the LRT opens up. So the 
this area I'm walking in is to the northwest of downtown. Yeah, prior to 1999, it wasn't even in the city of Toronto. It was in the borough or district of York. Those are some retro looking appliances. Old trunk antiques. And just to provide some context, there is no indoor dining currently allowed. So that's why a lot of these establishments look so empty and have chairs up on the tables and that sort of thing. Hopefully it won't be too much longer before they're given the green light to reopen properly. The indicators seem to indicate that we are at the peak right now. So over the next few weeks, we'll see how the hospitals sort themselves out. And if all is good, hopefully everything will be reopened. No frills across the street. That's a large lower cost supermarket chain. It's part of the Loblaws family. And this next major intersection at Dufferin and Eglinton has resembled a war zone for quite some time, mostly due to the LRT construction. Looks like a lot of the construction hoarding has cleared up or been cleared out. I said I would go to at least Dufferin Street, but we're only 25 minutes in, not even, so I think I'll just keep walking for a bit. The pot spot. There's the Eglinton Crosstown West Community Station, or Community Office. And it looks like we might be seeing a bike lane pop up here.
Now the last few times I walked through here, I had to navigate to the left here to get through this intersection. But it is much more opened up now than it was before. So this is Dufferin Street. Once one of the worst streets in the city. In fact, the entire province, but it's been resurfaced and fixed up. There's where Fairbank Station will be. When they were naming the LRT stations, I think they tried to use a naming convention that was more reflective of the local neighborhoods. But ultimately, I think that'll be rather confusing for the people that aren't so familiar with those names. I mean, not many people in the city of Toronto really know what Cedarvale is or Fairbank or Caledonia. The subway stations are named after the major streets that they're located on. Although here at Dufferin and Eglinton, if they called that Dufferin Station, there already would be a Dufferin Station to the south of here. But they could have called it Dufferin Station North, or even Dufferin LRT Station. Just as we have an Eglinton station and an Eglinton West, there's a St. Clair and a St. Clair West. So you could say, I'm not really a fan of the new naming convention. And I think that's a Metrolinx thing. Taste of Manila cuisine. So we're heading to an area known as Little Jamaica. At least unofficially it's known as that. And the last time I was through here was a few months ago during a night walk in the pouring rain. There's a Toronto Library branch. And it's a Starbank Convenience Mart. And I think there's one of those down at Dufferin and College. Back in the 70s, this area was quite the hotbed of reggae. In fact, I think outside of Jamaica, this is where more reggae was produced than anywhere in the world. And it's been a popular landing spot for those from the Caribbean ever since. Although recently there's Feelings that the area is under attack through gentrification and rising rents for both businesses and residences. Or residents. At residences? <laughs> you get the idea. There's an area up ahead called Reggae Lane. But really, I think the city should just get on with it and officially designate the area as Little Jamaica. They should also, also make sure they never zone these suburban style strip malls ever again. Ooh, that tire doesn't look like it's doing so good.
a little car who does not indicate. <laughs> and lady who just waves at me. I knew she was following that car. People always like to act like the car in front of them is a lead blocker. This place is quite popular. And you can see on the other side of the street, a lot of the LRT construction has disrupted the neighborhood. This was pretty much continuous all along Eglinton for quite a while. And it's finally starting to clear up. And these businesses can breed better a little bit on the ones that survived. This area is known as quite the food destination. And coming up is Oakwood. And that's where we'll find the future Oakwood LRT station. So I guess at this rate, I might as well just keep walking until I get to Eglinton West Station. There's the look south down Oakwood. And there's Reggae Lane actually where that police car is turning down. There's a pretty cool mural in there which I'll be able to check out. Randy's take it on the right. And wraps, which is coming up, is usually lined up at night.
And here's the eastern end of Reggae Lane. So it says there, between the 70s and 80s, an estimated 100,000 Jamaicans immigrated to Canada, many of whom ended up in this area. Plus others from around the Caribbean. Playline.com. Play online or get the app. What is the retail component of that for? Pong table and <laughs> not much else. And this here is Marley Avenue. The 63 bus will be heading all the way down to Liberty Village. And another 63 bus. The TTC loves to bunch the buses up. You can wait 15, 20 minutes for a bus and then a parade of two or three of them will come. And off in the distance, you can see the young Eglinton Midtown Toronto skyline. as I'm approaching Eglinton West slash Cedarvale Station, which is also at the southern foot of the Allen Road, which was originally planned to be a highway called the Allen Expressway, also known as the Spadina Expressway, and that would have cut south here through the Cedarvale Ravine. And some routes would have had it going right alongside Casa Loma and through the modern day Chinatown. So needless to say, a disaster was averted when that project was killed. to the residential area. Just to the west of here is Forest Hill North. That's a rather affluent area. And it looks like the station 
is occupying this block here. So again, this LRT station, or these LRT stations, continue to occupy large swaths of land. And it's really not so much a subway as it is an underground streetcar. I think we in the city need to keep our expectations in check. And this area right here has been a major choke point, even before the construction. This is a big choke point as the Allen Expressway or Allen Road dumps off onto Eglinton, but here the lanes have been reduced. There's all this construction equipment in the way. And since I'm about to head into the station to catch a bus, I'm going to slip my mask on. And I'll save the stretch of Eglinton West between here and Young Street for a later date. There goes the 32 bus pulling out. And this <laughs> she just said, What's up, bro? So I'm just going to head into the bus bay here and hop on the next eastbound 32 bus. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this walk along Eglinton West starting at Keel Street and heading west through Fairbank and into Little Jamaica and arriving here at Eglinton West Station. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I have an Instagram account, and there's links to PayPal as well. And I have a merch store at strideswag.com. Here's where I'll be catching my bus. And there's yet another 63 Ossington bus. All right, thanks for watching guys. Stay safe and I will catch you on the next one.